Hello and a very warm welcome to the Queen Channel. Things are getting tense right now for Harry and Meghan. So Meghan has insulted a famous chef and the tension is unprecedented. The chef even affirmed that she wouldn't hesitate to knock down and extinguish Meghan Markle's business path if she continued to not know her place and act so extravagant. Please watch the whole video to understand the beginning and the end of this story. It is pretty interesting. Have you all heard of Martha Stewart before? <laughs> so Martha Stewart is basically the queen of cookery, lifestyle, and all the rest. You probably also heard about how Martha Stewart had to spend a little bit of time in jail because of insider trading. She got wind that something was going south, so she engaged in insider trading. Honestly, I think she did what most male business people do all the time. The difference was she got busted for it. Anyway, there was an interesting show that I got very addicted to, The Apprentice. Now, she did a series of The Apprentice where she was actually the equivalent of Lord Sugar. So she really is an all-around guru. She'll teach you how to plan parties. She'll tell you about what the perfect playlist is and everything you need to have a perfect recipe too. And she'll also let you know how you can decorate your table. And now, according to In Touch magazine, insiders are saying that Martha Stewart is irritated and insulted at the idea that she's being asked about Meghan Markle's new brand, American Riviera Orchard, and she's disgusted that she's even being compared to her. One of my favorite quotes from this insider who spoke with In Touch was, if Meghan thinks she can come along and replicate what Martha has built with barely any experience, simply because she's married to a prince, she better think again. This insider also reports that Martha doesn't really think Meghan Markle is likely to succeed. They did also say that if Meghan proves to be real competition for Martha Stewart, then she will not hold back in trying to take her down. Martha Stewart is going to hold on to that title of Queen of Cookery for as long as she possibly can, and she is just as competitive now as she's ever been. I love the quote. And I also love that Martha has seen hundreds of Megan types come and go. And she says they all come with the same self-inflated hype. And then they find out it's a whole new ball game when it comes down to brass tacks. Now, Martha is right about that. Meghan Markle really wants to wear a crown of some sort. And if it can't be the real crown in the UK, then she'll try and steal Martha's away. Well, Martha is not going to let that happen. There's no way she's going to give up that crown. Martha's also a pretty fascinating character to me. I mean, she's done many different things. She's evolved in some very interesting ways. So first of all, her little stint in prison didn't do anything to hurt her popularity. She came out of it better than ever. I mean, I would never have imagined that the world would have accepted her back like that, but we did. And now she has this relationship with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> it's a really funny thing to see. Apparently, she and Snoop really are close friends. Okay, so let's just try to compare Megan and Martha Stewart. Well, I know, Martha, it's insulting, but I'm going to do it anyway. Now, Meghan Markle has been hated from the very beginning, and she's famous for her deception, for her lies, and she doesn't even know how to cook. There's somebody else, though, Martha, who is a professional chef. Now, sure, she served a little time in prison, but from the beginning to the end, she has always been loved and accepted by everybody, and we know that everybody makes mistakes. So what is the difference between these two women? Well, I think it mostly has to do with who they are as people. Martha Stewart has real talent. Meghan Markle, though, is useless, talentless, always just taking advantage of other people. She's a grifter. She betrayed the royal family, and she's an enemy of Brits. If we try to list all the things that are wrong with Meghan Markle, this video is going to go on for way too long, so I'm not even going to bother. Now, most recently, everybody knows, Meghan released and promoted this new jam. But Meghan's jam is not very impressive, to say the least. And I'm not sure what could possibly be inside of it. I mean, I assume just strawberries and sugar, but it is being sold for a ridiculous price. I mean, some jars are even being sold for over $100. What is more shocking, though, since Meghan's jam product has hit the market, is that Meghan Markle's jam has not been selling at all. I mean, it's not even for sale as far as I know. But you know whose jam did sell out? King Charles's Highgrove brand. So earlier this month, Meghan Markle sent the jam in a basket of lemons to a select group of 50 people, 50 of her closest celebrity friends, I guess. 
Former BBC Royal correspondent Michael Cole believes that Meghan Markle may try to sell each jar for 200 pounds. Can you imagine? He told GB News, I'm not sure a single jar has been sold yet, and we don't even know what the price is going to be. Ugh. I think it's really not even about Meghan Markle's jam. The influencers are going to feel like idiots when they realize all Meghan did was buy it from small batch jam company in California for $9 a jar and then slap that label on it. Now, if you really want this jam, you can just buy it from that company directly and then you don't have to give anything to Meghan Markle. We've got to stick with the brands that we are used to. I mean, that three-figure price may be what Megan's going to be paying in interest, penalties, and taxes assessed by the IRS, the FDA, and the DHEC on her current little venture. If she thinks that she's going to go global with any of her products, there's going to be even more expenses incurred. It just made me laugh, too, this whole idea that there is somebody out there who wants to pay 200 pounds for a jar of jam from Meghan Markle. (laughs) Who could be that desperate? Who could be that stupid? On the bright side, though, I guess that is going to really put a dent in the finances of the Meghan Markle fans, the sugars who have said they're going to be buying her products no matter what. Well, good luck with that, guys. I hope you enjoy that 200 pound a jar jam. I hope it's just as delicious as it should be, but it doesn't look like it will be. Or maybe it's just that Megan despises poor people. We know that to be true, and so she only wants rich people to buy her stuff. But see, wealthy people are not stupid enough to waste their money on a 200 pound jar of jam. If they were that dumb, they never would have gotten rich in the first place. It is insane to set a price point that most people are never even going to be interested in. I also do not believe for one second that Meghan Markle is making jam in her kitchen. I mean, come on. Like so many other fake celebrities, what they're doing is they're taking a product and they're marketing it as theirs. Anybody willing to pay such a ridiculous price, maybe they could use their money to help people less fortunate than themselves because obviously they have enough of it to blow. Now, these days, making jams is really not all that complicated. You can use appliances. So, okay, if I were to buy the appliance and also some organic fruit from the supermarket, it's going to turn out to be a lot cheaper, and I'll actually know what the ingredients are. Megan didn't even list the ingredients on her jam. I could get the same jar, the same cloth, the same colored labels, the same fonts even, and I can keep making many, many jars until I finally reach 200 pounds. Maybe I should go into competition with Megan. Well, I guess though, okay, there is a silver lining to this whole jam business. The more jam Meghan Markle makes, the less time she has to trash the royal family. Now that is a good thing. The important thing though is that Meghan has got to be doing it herself. She couldn't just be buying it and then slapping that label on it, which is exactly what she's doing. Honestly though, only the most die-hard Megan sycophants are going to be paying such an outrageous price for a glass jar with a non-stick label, a cover that's basically frayed, a couple of strawberries, a whole lot of sugar, and basically nothing else. I gotta admit though, I do have a sense of schadenfreude watching Meghan Markle's dreams disappear one by one. You remember when she and Harry set off for the US? Oh, we heard. They were going to be earning up to $1 million a speech. And then Megan's PR people put out the whole mess that she might run for president someday. And then, okay, maybe not president, but for sure, California senator. Well, in the end, look at what she's doing. She's selling jam. Okay. So if this business fails, what else are we going to see from Megan? Maybe she'll have to sign up and start delivering for DoorDash and Uber Eats. Megan should understand, though, that doing business and creating a whole new brand is not an easy task. First thing, she needs Food and Drug Administration certification. So she's got to find out the rules on listing ingredients, the sell and use by dates, the nutritional content, and the allergy information. Uh, As of now, she hasn't done any of that, and so she's not even going to be allowed to sell this stupid jam in America. It's going to take her a long time. There's a lot of paperwork to go through, and there's lots of money that she's going to have to spend to comply with the rules and regulations, especially considering that apparently now she's lying about where these strawberries come from. She's claiming they're all grown in her strawberry field at her Montecito McMansion. What is she on about? 
The reality is Meghan Markle's products haven't even been registered. I'm not sure if the authorities have checked and verified the safety of Meghan's products. Or does this 200 pound price tag include health insurance for food poisoning and diarrhea because that's what you're going to be getting? What on earth are people even going to be finding in this jam? Maybe some ginger fluff, maybe a dark wiry hair, maybe some flakes of Meghan Markle's skin that looks like it's melting off her face. So let's compare Meghan Markle's jam to the King's jam. Huh, there's no comparison. I mean, who is gonna buy Meghan's jam when you can buy King Charles' jam if you really want royal jam? Now, I do buy Buckingham Palace and other royal jams because they're delicious. Now, they're organic, they're fresh, and the crested tins are beautiful. And guess what? They're not expensive. Now, High Grove is a bit more expensive, but it's completely worth it. All the king's produce is organic, and it's sold. It's not to profit the king, but he gives all the money to charities. So out of the two jams, it's pretty obvious what people are going to choose. Now, you can buy stuff at Buckingham Palace and the other royal family shops, but it's not even expensive, and all the proceeds go to charity, even the high grove stuff. The tins are so attractive and they've got shortbread. I mean, it's really hard not to buy more. I remember when my friend first bought me something and I only wanted to buy more. Now her one jar of jam though is 200 pounds. If you wanna spend 200 pounds at Buckingham Palace or the other royal family shops or even Highgrove, well, you can buy some delicious marmalade, you can buy jam, preserves, and even biscuits too. And you can buy lots of it. And the shortbreads, I don't know if you've all tried them, but oh my God, they are delicious. It's like eating pure butter and they're so crispy too, crunchy and perfect. And remember, all the King's products are organic. If you haven't tried them yet, I encourage you to. Anytime I go to Britain or one of my friends does, I beg them to bring me back something. Or maybe there's another possibility here. Maybe Megan should sell jam at this ridiculous price to earn money to raise her kids and cover her daily expenses because right now I'm pretty sure their finances are at rock bottom. I mean, what they do doesn't have any value and people know that. They don't know any longer where they can make money. And I mean, if they really do have kids, kids are expensive to raise. Speaking of children, by the way, I would like to give you some information that I'm sure many people want to know. Recently, we've heard that Meghan and Harry had some major arguments over parenting. Apparently, there are aspects of parenting those two just cannot agree on. It is worth mentioning, though, and it's pretty interesting to me that it seems like this time Harry has the upper hand. So Harry and Meghan are teaching their kids to fight. Harry and Meghan right now are working on a couple of new series for Netflix. One that supposedly is going to celebrate the joys of cooking, gardening, entertaining, and friendship. And then the other one is going to be shot at the U.S. Open Polo Championship. But obviously, Harry has won against Meghan over their decision to not include the kids, Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet, in their new shows for Netflix, according to an insider. What's even more interesting is that Meghan's cooking show is not going to be filmed at their 11 million pound Montecito McMansion. Instead, they're going to be filming it at a neighbor's home. And their kids are not going to appear in either show because Harry wants to keep them hidden away from the public eye. Meghan, though, wants to show them to the world because she figures that's going to make some money for herself. Now, this is common knowledge, but in reality, I don't believe Meghan wants their kids to appear in public so easily. I'm not sure I 100% believe these rumors. And we've got to ask the question, do they have something to hide? Now, unless the kids are not really living with them, I don't see any reason not to show them occasionally. It's still such a big mystery. I simply can't understand who they are. I mean, even kids of top officials in the whole world, president's kids, for example, they're not hidden away like Harry and Meghan hide theirs away. It's a really bizarre situation. If you never include your kids when you go out as a family, when you enjoy vacations, for example, if you never let them mix with other kids, I mean, including Nacho and Delphina's kids, then you are not allowing them to live a normal life. 
a life stuck indoors all the time is pathetic, and I'm sure their development has been affected, again, if they're even real and if they really live with them. Remember, Harry and William were often seen out and about with both their parents. They would go skiing, they would enjoy other vacations. In my opinion, Harry is not a very good father because he doesn't even allow his children to experience normal society. He's not allowing them to develop into normal people. It's not going to turn out well for those two. I mean, they're going to end up being very damaged. If they exist, those children have not been properly socialized, and this is at such an important stage in their development too. They won't be able to deal with the world because they've never been in the world. So they won't be able to do what we all learn to do at a very young age, which is evaluate our situation, read the room, understand other people, understand how to develop healthy relationships. Because remember, from the time we're little babies, one thing we all do is watch the reactions of other people around us, and we watch how people navigate events to understand how we're going to do that. There are studies being done that are finding problems with babies, and sometimes even puppies, who were born during the COVID pandemic, and it's because of the fact that some of these babies and dogs didn't have any contact with anybody other than close family for nearly eight months. So we see in those babies and even puppies and dogs, we see serious anxiety problems and coping issues too. So you can only imagine what's going to happen to two children after five years of being hidden away and not allowed to interact with anybody outside of the family. And what is Harry thinking? I mean, why? Why is he treating the kids that way? Does he believe that they really are these important stars? Why does Harry believe their kids are the most sought after people ever? They're simply not. Catherine and William's children are a lot more important. They're much more sought after and they're more loved by the people and the media. They're not harassed though. The press in fact has been very respectful of their wishes and they do not bother them. And they're a lot more important than Archie and Lily. Now everybody loves George. Everybody loves Charlotte. Everybody loves Prince Louis. The only thing Harry is doing is trying to create this made up story that their kids are so sought after, so important, they have to keep them hidden away. It's like what Michael Jackson did. And the fact that Meghan wanted their kids apparently to appear on their TV shows was a little surprising to me. I'm sure Meghan still wears the pants in that relationship. And I'm guessing she agrees with Harry. She also doesn't want the kids out there. She may have her own reasons though. I mean, I think that she's worried they might take the attention away from her. And I'm sure she has manipulated Harry and the situation to her advantage. Because she figures this is going to make her appear to be a caring mother. She wants to protect the children. I don't believe it, though. I'm sure there's a lot more to this story. I mean, Harry, after all, has said that whatever Meghan wants, Meghan gets. Perhaps one of these days he's going to wake up and understand that he's simply her puppet and she's controlling him completely. But anyway, on the other hand, we are hearing that Megan apparently said that she wants Archie and Lily to appear in their new Netflix shows. So could it be that she's got some more rent kids available? Maybe Harry didn't agree though, because Harry doesn't want to expose their secret. If Megan really was pregnant with Archie, and we know good and well she wasn't, you know she would never miss an opportunity to imitate her idol Princess Diana, showing up with a newborn on the steps of Portland Hospital, dressed in exactly the same clothing that Diana had. Megan would never pass up such an excellent opportunity to take center stage. I remember late last year, they did announce that this year the kids were going to enter public life. So if it hasn't happened yet, then it looks to me like this was the scheme all along. Megan schemes and plans and plots everything so carefully, and so the kids are going to make an appearance whenever Megan decides it's time. To be honest though, she is desperate right now. She has got to do something to make money, and I'm sure merging the children is on her mind. Any photos of the kids would be worth a lot of money to the photo agencies, and this is something she realizes. But it's not something she's going to continue to make a lot of money off of. The first few photos, yeah, she's going to get a bunch of those, but after that, people are going to lose interest. And I'm guessing she's probably going to sell any images of them to the highest bidder. But I hope people don't care too much about the kids. It's important that we don't buy images of these anonymous children. Again, it might turn out to be a pretty lucrative payday for Meghan Markle, but only one payday. 
And it is funny to me how they're trying to act like Harry has some type of power over Megan. Was there ever any doubt that the kids would be in the show? I mean, TVs have gotten a lot better over the years, but huh, we still can't make it possible to see things that don't exist. I mean, we can use AI, I guess, but even that's pretty obvious still. And I wonder, what is he going to do if he comes to Britain? Is he going to just cover them with a blanket, maybe? But now they're American citizens staying in the U.S., so I don't see any reason that they have to come to the U.K. anyway. And if Harry still has the nerve to come back to the U.K., how would he manage to smuggle those kids in? And if they existed, why in the world would you want to still be hiding them at this age? I mean, if they really were born like Harry and Meghan said, I'm worried about those kids. I'm guessing they're just saving them for the right moment. I guess they're living a life like prisoners with no freedom whatsoever. They can't even have friends. They don't know who their grandfather is, their grandmother either. They don't know their cousins. They don't know their aunts and uncles. It's a really sad life. Or maybe the kids are a big problem for them because they know if they show the kids, they're going to end up in jail. The manner in which they acquired those kids may not have been compliant with UK law. The truth is, Harry and Meghan, you can't just buy children, at least not in the UK. And that could account for why they ran off to the US before pretending to have another one. Sometimes I do wonder what words we can even use in the English language to fully describe Meghan Markle. Cruel, evil, it's not strong enough. The truth and the lies about their children, it's just exhausting at this point in time. Now there is a theory. They were born because Meghan had to be seen as keeping up with Catherine, and she had to have kids, otherwise she was just going to be the wife. Somebody should have informed Meghan, though, that surrogate children are not considered legitimate in the royal family. They cannot be listed in the line of succession. So both Megan and the children are still nobodies. Wah, wah, wah. So many people have also predicted that this would happen. The kids are their get-out-of-jail-free card. They must be seriously delusional, though, if they really believe their children are anything but a curiosity. I mean, at this point, that's all they are. They believe that they're so popular and they're only going to become more popular when they show their kids to the whole world, but it's not going to happen. People will be interested at first because they're curious and then people will quickly forget all about it. There are real royal children to focus on and those children are not Archie and Lily. If those kids are real, one day they're going to look back on their lives and they're going to realize everything their parents deprived them of and they're going to be very angry. And they're going to realize they only made an appearance when it was going to make their parents some money. How incredibly cruel. The fact is, Megan knows the kids are going to be the only draw for the show because she and Harry are not interesting. Also, there's something seriously wrong with the way Harry and Meghan see things. I mean, everything to them is a fight that they gotta win. It is not the basis for a happy and long marriage, I can tell you that much. I mean, whether it's in a personal or legal context, sometimes, usually, actually, there's gonna be greater happiness in just letting things go. You would think this is something a couple of philanthropists understand very well. I mean, they should be more focused on people less fortunate than themselves instead of trying to win their own battles. Remember in the docu-series, we got to see a version of Archie mixing some flour. But poor baby, he's not going to get to be in Meghan Markle's cooking show. I wonder why. And why is Netflix apparently so complicit in this scam? They had to have known that child they were shooting was not artificial. He was doing assorted tasks and it was more than one child. It was obvious. So it looks like Netflix is taking full advantage of this scandal Harry and Meghan have created. Now, in the Netflix Mocu series, there was also a child claimed to be Archie with a duck rabbit book. And then in the Oprah interview, it was claimed that Archie was running on the beach. How much more evidence do we need? I mean, it could be the case that the story is just a smokescreen, that in fact there were no children whatsoever living with Harry and Meghan, and the rented kids are no longer available. I believe that too. I'm not sure what everybody else thinks, but I know personally I am sick and tired of the scam with the children. The more we pay attention to Harry and Meghan, the more they exploit their kids to make money. Megan's business right now is facing some real difficulties, and they are taking full advantage of the children to make money. The kids have become the main income earners for their family. 
How do you feel about this issue? Please comment below. And then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye for now, and I'll be back to see you again soon in other videos on the Queen YouTube channel.